how would Gabby Garcia do in the men's division in MMA? Does she have a chance? Gabby Garcia is a freak of nature. Standing at 6 feet 2 inches and weighing a staggering 235 pounds, she is one fearsome woman. A professional martial artist with a specialty in jiu-jitsu, Gabby Garcia has also tasted a significant amount of success in MMA. She currently has a 7-0 record. One of the bouts was a no contest, four of the remaining six were won by submission, and two were concluded by technical knockout. As a result, Garcia remains undefeated in female mixed martial arts. And that begs the question, with a physique like hers, how would she fare in the men's division of MMA? Well, in this video, we want to explore that. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click on the bell icon so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. And with that done, let's turn our attention back to the intimidating Gabby Garcia. Gabby Garcia was born on November 17, 1985, in Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. And from the point of her birth, it was clear that she was always destined to be a fighter. Or how else do you explain being related to six well-known Brazilian combat sports athletes? Mitsuyo Maeda, Carlos Gracie, Helio Gracie, Rolls Gracie, Romero Calvacante, and Fabio Gurgel are all relatives of Garcia's. So, before she even knew it, her destiny was always going to be in and around combat sports. However, it didn't start out that way. In her early teens, Garcia was fascinated by other sports. We're talking about handball, volleyball, field hockey, and most likely soccer. You can't be Brazilian and not love soccer now, can you? But later, her family would move to Sao Paulo, and this is where Garcia would really get into martial arts training. At Sao Paulo, her uncle took her under his wings and began to train her in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. For years, Garcia and her uncle would train together. However, Garcia hadn't quite decided to go full-time with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, at least not yet. She would eventually make that decision while she was still in her final year in college studying advertising. She would later begin to train with Fabio Gugel at the Alliance team in Sao Paulo, Brazil. With her mind now fully focused on jiu-jitsu, Garcia began her martial arts career. In 2008, Gabby Garcia earned a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, establishing herself as a master of the art. With her mastery of jiu-jitsu, Garcia would go on to claim six world jiu-jitsu titles, as well as four Abu Dhabi Combat Club championships. Her fourth ADDC title came in 2019, in a fight against Karina Santi, which she won by submission. A master at applying submission maneuvers, with her victory over Karina Santi, Garcia became the first woman to win four ADDC titles. Garcia's foray into mixed martial arts has also been impressive. With her dominant performances at the World Jiu-Jitsu Performances, Garcia became a target of MMA organizations looking to feature her in their main events. She would eventually make her MMA debut in December 2015, when she came up against Lead de Tapa for Ryzen Fighting Federation. The match didn't last long as Tapa was no match for Garcia, and in just the first round, Garcia was awarded the victory by technical knockout. Garcia's next match came in April 2016 when she went up against Anna Maliakova. This time around, the match went into the second round, but the outcome was inevitable as Garcia defeated Maliakova using an armbar submission move. Next up was Destiny Yarborough at Ryzen World Grand Prix 2016 on September 25th 2016. This one didn't last long either. Garcia ended the match in the first round after using an Americana submission hold. At Ryzen 4, Garcia was billed to face Shinobu Kandori. However, due to injury, Kandori was forced to pull out and she was replaced by Yumiko Hata. Poor Hata, she stood no chance. 
In the first round, Garcia ended the bout via a technical knockout. Garcia then lost a chance to finally have a match with Shinobu Kandori on December 29, 2017, after missing the weight requirement by a massive 28 pounds. And so the match was canceled. Then in December 2018, Garcia came up against Barbara Napomasino. And just like many of her previous matches, Garcia won the fight in the first round thanks to another successful submission move. None of the women Garcia faced came remotely close to beating her. And this was no surprise. For a woman, Garcia looks like a freak of nature. Not only is she incredibly tall and strong, but she is also an extremely gifted fighter with a mastery of grappling and submission techniques thanks to her training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. However, this year, Garcia lost her first professional Jiu-Jitsu fight in two years when she went up against Amanda Leeds. The victory stunned the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as no one saw it coming. But perhaps Garcia's loss happened because she's lost interest in fighting females. Clearly, she showed that she wanted a new challenge when, after the loss to Leaves, she began to call out several high-profile jiu-jitsu male fighters, challenging them to a duel. This included the likes of Gordon Ryan. Garcia didn't get her way with Ryan, but she managed to get an agreement with ADDC medalist Craig Jones. As of now, though, no official plans have been made for their intergender match. However, this agreement got many thinking. If Garcia was truly looking for a serious challenge, how about calling out the likes of Arjun Bular, Ryan Bader, and Francis Naganau, and challenging them to a heavyweight MMA fight? But the question is, how would she fare in such a fight? Let's answer the question about weight classes first. As we said earlier, Garcia weighs 235 pounds. The current UFC heavyweight champion, Francis Naganau, weighs 263 pounds. By the way, Garcia has been known to reach 265 pounds herself. Ryan Vader weighs 205 pounds, while Arjen Bolar weighs 235 pounds. So yes, technically speaking, Garcia can challenge any one of these guys to a fight. But of course, it's unlikely that any of their respective MMA organizations would sanction an intergender fight. More importantly, would it even be worth it? Does Garcia stand a chance? Physically, it might seem like a good match, but not exactly. While Gabby Garcia's weight, height, and overall physique might be comparable to her male counterparts in MMA, that does not mean she's capable of competing with them on a professional level. And this all boils down to body structure. She may be 235 pounds of pure muscle, but her body structure will be inherently different from a man of the same weight and build. A man with a similar body build to Garcia's, being a man, will have a stronger skeletal muscles, connective tissues, higher bone density, and so on. And this is just down to the fact that, from birth, men are just built differently from women. It's all about biology, folks. Now, against an average American dad of the same weight and age, sure, Garcia will have a field day. But against highly trained professional heavyweight MMA fighters, it will be a very tough one for Garcia. We just don't see this one going her way, folks. But let's see how her match with Craig Jones turns out, if it eventually goes ahead. Who knows? Maybe it will get us to change our minds. But for now, we think it'd be better for Garcia to steer clear of Francis Naganau and the likes. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.